Bait, who 48 hours before had been in prison. She showed all over the world, this is my friend. She had me up to the cabin at their big, lovely cabin that I just love their home. She had me up for dinner with Franklin and the whole family. And she'd help me get Bibles for prisoners, by the way. She's a great lady. She is the power behind the throne, believe me. She is wonderful. <laughs> what a great lady Ruth Graham is. And she said, Jim, I had to get an address for her. So I reached in my pocket and pulled out my envelope. In prison, we're not allowed to have a wallet. We have envelopes. And so I still was carrying my envelope with my, some little cards and things in it. And I pulled it out to get her a number or an address or something. And she said, don't you have a wallet? And I said, well, yeah, here it is. I didn't think a thing of it. I never even get her in my mind that that wasn't a wallet. You tell something long enough and hard enough, you're going to believe it. She left the room. And she went into the bedroom. And she came back. And she was carrying this wallet. She said, this is Billy's wallet. <laughs> she said, he's got a lot of them. And he doesn't really need this. I want you to have it. So I have Billy Graham's wallet. <laughs> but I want you to know, just as the king cried out to Daniel, as the king cried out to Daniel, is thy God able to deliver thee? Just as if 2020 had gone to Joseph. Can you imagine if 2020 went to Joseph in the pit or in the prison and they put that microphone down and they'd say, Joseph, do you think you're in the will of God? <laughs> it's hard to tell people you're in the will of God when you're in the pit or you're in the prison. But most of God's people spend more time in the Bible, in the pits, and in the prisons, and in the deserts, and in the solitude times, because that's where God makes his men and women. Yeah. 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 Philippians 4.13, Paul says, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. And you go out and build the Taj Mahal. That verse has nothing to do with building the Taj Mahal. That's our prison verse, and don't take it from us. Amen. That belongs to us prisoners. Paul was talking about prison. He was talking about the fact that he didn't like being in prison, but he was content to be in whatever state he found himself. And he said, my God is able. He says, I can do all things. I can live through prison. I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. If you could ask the four or three Hebrew, Hebrew children, if you could ask them right now, is your God able to bring you through the fire? Sometimes you have to go through the fire. But they would say, oh, yes, my God is able. image of the Son of God. The fourth man was there in the fiery furnace. Why? Because our God says it. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will never, never, in no case, not ever, not at all, by no means, in any wise, I will never, 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 never leave you. I will never forsake you.
Can you guys hang on for just a few more minutes? Just a few more minutes. This uh, truly, I believe, has been a historic day. You know, not, it was, you know, that message had to be preached in this place. It had to be preached right here in this place. God is going to use this place, and he's going to use that man and his family as a testimony of his power of redemption. God is in the redemption business. I tell you, we are all the benefit of our God loving to restore and to redeem. But I tell you, you know, there is something coming down. And I believe, uh, you know, as I heard one preacher said, uh, a man that you'd probably all know his name said concerned Jim's book, which I haven't read, but he said it has the power to transform Christianity. And I believe there's something going on in the earth that really does have the power to transform the definition of Christianity in the earth today, and we desperately need it. This whole conference was about new wineskins. I believe we got a real good definition of what that means this afternoon. Uh, parents, I know it's time to pick up your children. And listen, there's a whole lot more to do just about what happened here this afternoon. There was a, a dream that came down and uh, some other things last night with a couple of people that I believe really was a message from the Lord. I believe this needs to be continued. I believe there's something yet. And I'm just going to ask you, this is going to continue tonight, okay? There is something that the Lord wants to impart. He doesn't want us to go home without it. Okay, but uh, tonight just come prepared. Just come prepared. Uh, I believe there's a punctuation that it has to come to what the Lord has been saying to us that we really need, and we need to hear uh, some of these things that He has spoken prophetically. Listen, we really appreciate you, Jim. We appreciate you. Jim yeah. said, we, we love you, man. We're just so thankful for what who you are. We're thankful for what God's done in your life. We're thankful for your friendship. We're thankful for someone who wouldn't quit, for someone who, who has gone, you know, and, and I believe taken a journey that uh, is for all of us. There are some people that are prophetic messages, and I believe he was. I believe this place was a prophetic message and a revelation of what the body of Christ was, but I tell you, this place and that man are going to be a revelation of what it's to become also. You can count on that. Come back, 7.30, ready. Amen.